Welcome to Kaplan Professionals Monthly Economic Update. I'm Andrew Stark and we're here today with Chief Economist of Industry Super Australia, Stephen Anthony. Stephen, welcome. Thanks for the opportunity, Andrew. You wrote in September that Australia stands on the precipice of a major social crisis due to the national affordable housing shortage. How has this arisen? This has arisen uh, because of about 25 years of policy failure. What we're seeing now is that there's a, a national shortfall of affordable housing of about 350,000. Um, now, government can't even give you that number. We've had to estimate that ourselves. And that there is no planning process that will identify the shortage and will put in place a process to reduce that shortage. So we say that's a, a national um, uh, problem. And when you think about affordable housing and how important it is as an infrastructure issue, it's probably the most pressing um, social issue the nation faces. And, and clearly dealing with it is a major economic priority. All you have to do is wander the streets of any major capital city during the evenings and you'll, you'll, you'll see the problem close at hand and how it feeds um, other issues such as drug abuse, um, uh, domestic violence, you know. On, onwards it goes. So we think that this is, is such a serious issue that um, all levels of government need to coordinate to fix it. What are some of the knock-on effects and how do you see the situation being improved? When every human being cannot make uh, you know, a positive contribution um, to society, can, cannot, um, is not in a position to do their best, then um, their potential economic contribution is lost as well. You know, so that's a tragedy. So what we want to do is address the problem head on. And the problem is one of, really one of planning. Firstly, we need um, governments to design a process whereby the shortage is identified clearly by local government area. Once, once the shortage is identified at the areas where more housing is needed, governments should then seek to tender out that effort um, to, we think, community housing organisations. So, it's, so it should say, community housing organisations, put your hands up and tell us which of you are in a position to build more affordable housing. Um, once that's done, the question is, who will fund this, this building? Will it, be, will it be government directly? Or will it be um, the institutional sector? Or will it be mums and dads, you know, the way we do negative gearing? Now, I, I, I would suspect that it has to be uh, big institutions because this is a big, large-scale problem and really you need the expertise of the financial experts to get involved, to roll their sleeves up and to fund this problem. But that said, um, when you're looking at uh, some of the potential uh, customers for this housing, um, you know, these, these people are not in any sort of position to provide a commercial rate of return. So it may be that government has to offer a tax credit to get institutions involved, and once uh, they have offered that tax credit, um, perhaps tying the successful delivery of housing outcomes um, to those tax credits, and then allowing um, institutions to walk away from, the, from, from their efforts. So in other words, to write off their investments. Um, to me, that makes eminent sense. But what it also means is you've, you've built up scale in the community housing sector. At the moment, there just isn't enough equity investment um, to, 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 to build the houses that are needed to deal with a shortfall. One way to get equity investment quickly into the sector is to provide a, a tax credit or some sort of write-off process. The Rudd-Gillard government introduced something called the, the NRAS scheme. So um, it was the you know, national rental assistance scheme and, and basically it offered uh, you know, a fixed subsidy uh, for each affordable housing place per year provided by a community housing organisation. I, I, would, I would just write off the full amount of, of building that, of that um, you know, particular place, uh, that thus uh, incentivising institutions to get involved. You might find that um, you get a massive inflow of foreign capital to do this building as well because um, you know it, it may just 
it may just suit um, various uh, taxpayers in different positions to, to grab hold of that write-off. Australia has again ended the year with a new Prime Minister and a new Treasurer. Take us through your report card for 2018 in terms of the government's economic successes and failures. Well, on the plus side, um, we have a very strong labour market, we have very strong employment, um, we have a benign wages environment, which is, which from the perspective of business is, 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 is a good thing. Um, and we have a very reasonable measured growth rate right at the moment. Last, last set of national accounts said 3.4. So on, on the face of it, that, that's looking good. Financial markets are still ahead compared to where we were, say, 30th of June um, 2017. Uh, so so that's, that's all very promising. Um, and uh, on the other hand, um, we do face a number of significant structural challenges. So firstly, there's just the issue of um, uh, uh, the continuity of government. We've had, um, we've had uh, a series of federal governments that, that really haven't been able to stay the course. Um, and um, that certainly would be undermining confidence and, and certainty in, you know, in, in the, in, from the perspective of decision makers in business. That's not good. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we've really gone through a decade of short-termism in policy. You'd think that property developers have been running the Australian economy. We've been really flooding our major cities with immigrants. You know. Um, what we haven't been doing is being systematic about generating productivity gains which will drive up wages and create a virtuous circle of growth. What we've been doing is creating arithmetic growth by bringing more heads to the table um, but not necessarily growing per capita living standards. So we've got to get back to basics, we've got to get back to product productivity drivers. Unfortunately, this sort of um, property development approach to economic policy has led to a situation where um, we've exe basically created a property boom, especially in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. And um, now that um, you know, uh, circumstances aren't as fortuitous, we are seeing um, prices falling and we may see, you know, before too long, a full-on property bust. And, and that is something that government needs to get ahead of the curve on in terms of managing. Stephen, thanks for your time today. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Andrew.